Hello everyone, and welcome to the third session of Star Trek Congo. If this is your first time joining us, hello and welcome. Uh, we are an actual play podcast that is using the Star Trek Adventures rule system by Modifius Entertainment. Our current era is post-STO, specifically in the year 2415. And if you're curious, our ship, the USS Congo, is a Trident class that is flying as part of the Babylon fleet out of Deep Space October. Now what that means is that this game comes after our previous game, Star Trek October, in regards to the timeline. Now, of course, do not stress if you haven't watched October or if you have to leave early. The VODs for Congo and all my other games are on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, hopefully you don't really need to have watched anything else to enjoy this game, but you're probably going to uh, recognize some references if you do. Uh, announcements this week. Um, I actually have two. Uh, the first is sort of a reminder that I do have a new text-based West Marches style uh, role-playing experience on my Discord server uh, that is titled Babylon Fleet, which if you just heard moments ago is basically a way that if you've ever wanted to play in the ELH verse but never had the time or weren't able to catch one of my games, well, now you can as a uh, text role-playing format. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, check out my Discord. Link should be below the stream. Uh, in terms of second announcements, uh, it actually relates to channel points. And for those of you who are now looking at your Twitch screens, uh, there's actually two new redeems. There's Q Powers Good and Q Powers Evil. Also, thank you all for the bits. Uh, the Q Powers Good basically gives the players one momentum. And the only restriction on that, well, I guess there's two restrictions, is the players themselves can't redeem that reward, and the uh, cooldown on the redeem is going to be one hour. So there's one hour in between each time you can give the players one momentum. Um, the Q Powers Evil Redeem is similar in that there's a one hour cooldown, and what that does is it gives me two threat, which I'll try to then spend on a complication or something to mess with the players, uh, but it is not something that I'm not going to interrupt roleplay to introduce. Uh, so I think that's important to say. But uh, with that, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves. And we already have a Q Powers Evil Redeem. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Nice. Well, I I think I have a complication ready to go once we get into it. But yeah. Um, Matthew, if you want to start. Uh, thank you, Genesis. 2001. We, we appreciate your contributions to our pain. Uh, my name is Matthew. I play Captain Lee Tobin, an intensely religious Bajoran who is on his first command. And uh, thank you for complicating that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, we still love you for being here. How's that? Um, so I'm John. I play uh, Jaro, the uh, chief engineer. Used to be um, pretty savvy little pilot but has kind of shied away from the con lately and is uh is ready to prove himself in a completely different capacity and i'm uh aaron i play lieutenant commander dottig the doctor come first officer and science officer of the uss congo and i'm also thankful that uh genesis 2001 you complicated uh, Captain Lee's first command. Every little, <laughs> I, every little bit helps. I'm Watney. I play Dr. Alel, the uh, Denobulan chief medical officer of the Congo. And you can find me on Twitch at Doc Watney. And I am Dag. I play Lieutenant Paul Fives Tate, a uh, former Borg drone returned to Starfleet after some pretty harrowing recovery, uh, is always interested in embracing life by the horns as opposed to those other Borg drones that get all sad and mopey about it. Uh, if you want to talk about it, hit me up on Twitter at Trek Nexus. And of course, if you don't know me by now, I'm ELH the Game Master. And I believe today's opening log is coming from the captain himself. So uh, take it away, Matthew. Captain's log, stardate 
The USS Congo has been relieved by the USS Heisenberg in our patrol of the Alderson Disk Nebula. The custodian of the facility provided us with extensive navigational charts of the region that have obviated the need to devote the Congo to the task of a weeks-long survey operation. We leave behind us the Alderson Disk itself, a masterwork of engineering and a tomb world, a testament to the dangers of playing God. The crew tasked with the maintenance of the facility paid with their lives for attempting to bioengineer the menagerie of creatures on display. There are things that the prophets did not mean for us to tamper with, and it's good to be reminded of that. I almost wish that we had more time, though. Lieutenant Alel is close to entering her hibernation phase and could use the uneventful span, while Ensign Jaro becomes progressively more reclusive as the days go by, sequestering himself in the holodeck. On the other hand, my typically gregarious security chief is all the more effervescent due to hyperstimulation of his cortical node during our last mission. Commander Datig remains quite a solid rock. He reminded me that, well, Starfleet Protocol really is paramount. I made the right choice in my first officer, but the speed that I leapt to making a morally suspect solution to the problem is concerning. As a captain, can I really afford to make the preservation of life my highest concern? As a man, can I not? Regardless, the mission continues. The Congo has intercepted a radio broadcast emanating from an uncharted M-class world that has enthralled the crew. It's broadcasting a series of audio dramas that seem to describe a level of technological development akin to Victorian-era Earth, though I'm staring at a copy of Shakespeare's Tempest and the Nicomachean Ethics right now. We're not living on a fantasy island or in ancient Earth's Greece. Who knows what we might find? It is likely, however, that we'll have to take into consideration the Prime Directive, and may be limited to extensive sensor scans of the world. Either way, I look forward to our encounter with the unknown. Very nice. And uh, to balance things out, it seems Shizno has redeemed uh, Q powers, so you're going to start with one momentum. Yay. All right, so we're going to start today's session uh, in the Congo's Bridge. And as everyone is currently present, uh, the only odd person out really is whoever is sitting at the actual con and Ensign Rowan. And uh, I think it's one of those things where all of you are sort of listening in as the speakers uh, start off with sort of static over the over what would be like radio static and slowly tune in on what would be a radio program. Now, um, one thing I would say here is that I did get with the players a little bit. So the players actually have created their own little audio dramas, and it's going to be just as much a surprise to the viewers as it will be to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, with the scene set, let's go ahead and get started. Captain. Who's, who's captain. going first? Captain, Captain. <laughs> Um, uh, we're, we're, uh, I've been monitoring the broadcast like you told me to because uh, we're broadcast. They're, they're broadcasting, and I'm getting the audio wave from that one commercial that I really enjoyed, and I want to play it for you because I think it's really funny. Put it on speakers, please. Okay, okay, yeah, it's Uncle Spivy. He's great. Bloop, bloop. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello, hello, hello. Do you have dried or cracked mucous membranes? Do you have trouble getting motivated during those dry days? Well, do I have the thing for you? Uncle Spivey's Miracle Gel. This unique blend of herbs, plants, and just a touch of pure denithium will have you feeling better than ever. Is this gel right for you, you ask? Of course it is. This gel is good for everyone. So slither on down and pick up a tube today. Only 35 quarons a tube. All claims are currently unproven and may cause itching, legions, and general burning sensations during use. If you experience these systems, please wait two days and try again. As you never know, it might you may gain a tolerance. See, That's isn't that hilarious, Captain? Because, like, he tells you to buy this thing because it's going to make you help, and at the end, he tells you it's going to actually hurt you. That's not funny. What do you mean? That's hilarious. It's like they discovered science fiction, like, That's 100 years hilarious. before it's... Terra did. That's not how you deal with side effects. You don't keep going with treatment if you have the side effects as severe as the one he's been. 
you know, Captain, Doctor, I feel like he may be peddling some sort of a low-grade steroid. Well, we'll have to take it up with him personally when we hopefully meet him. What do you think? What do you think he means by slither? Do you mean like? Do you think that? Do you it's think like a slang. Like... It's like a slang for the planet, right? If you slither. It may indicate that this is some sort of serpentine race, simply. Ah, it's mm. ah, can't be. And why not, Doctor? You know, that would make their medical dramas make more sense because they keep talking about all those organs that we don't have. And I know Alel was like super interested in the medical dramas. And that one professor, I think they might be like from a university because they were like broadcasting a full on autopsy. And that was really enjoyable. It was pretty awesome. But also, Dateg, I will have you know that in the Fenrir's logs, they made first contact with a serpentine race from Andromeda. Well, doctor, that's a very good callback. <laughs> um, I just thought you would like to know. I would I'm like surprised to know that more. you hadn't read the report, Doctor. Doctor? Well, I, I, I skimmed it. You see, Lieutenant Allel, I'm, I'm driving home the point that his medical knowledge in this case is woefully inefficient or insufficient. So well, that's why by he chose calling upon his, his profession. <laughs> yes. I'm a specialist. They're about to go into their third in a series of military dramas. This country, this country, country, Earth, planet, this planet has an amazing military history full of many marches across grounds that sound a lot like front yards on houses and giant like aphid type things that they use for aer aerial carrying. When we say slither, do we mean like snakes or like slugs? Well, given that we haven't received any actual images from the planet as of yet, it's difficult to discern. Although you weren't able to determine anything from that uh, autopsy report that they broadcast for some strange reason, what a bizarre culture we're going to encounter. It's hard when it's audio only. This is true. Sir. Um, yes. I'm a little concerned that we're picking up, you know, broadcasts from an unexplored world it might indicate that they're pre-warp. But they make fascinating entertainment. Did you know that if you travel 400 light years away from Earth, that you can actually pick up their earliest broadcasts? One might think that if someone didn't know the culture of Earth already, that those might be historical documents. Do you mean that they might end up basing their entire culture off of what they're picking up from outer space? Yeah. And no then would build, that. build structures similar to what are in these historical documents. And Has that ever happened, though? Mr. Fives, in Terran history, in, in almost every single sentient race's history, there's a period where they look to the sky and wonder, are we alone? And they search. They search for meaning. And in knowing others, we know ourselves. Not unlike the SETI program of uh, mid-20th century Earth. I don't think it's too far outside the realm of possibility that that uh, could happen. That's a remarkable deduction, Dr. Lello. Well, I just have one word. V'ger. And I think Edson Rowan actually kind of coughs that and goes, <clears throat> um... I, I don't know if anyone cares, but when Cations picked up Earth's radio signals, we thought you were worshipping cats as gods, which we actually thought was really flattering. But, yeah. You know, humans I, did that. Yeah, many cultures on Earth in ancient times did worship. Oh, wise. wait, so Egyptians aren't aren't like an inside joke? They, they are, they're actually a thing? They were a thing. Uh, I mean, that was they, part of their ancient they, culture. I mean, the nation mean they state were, existed. They, that for a they, while they and i mean technically there are still people from the egypt region oh huh. yeah go back to i'm gonna go back to steering the ship <laughs> doctor if i may say that suggestion that this culture or other cultures might have been influenced by earth entertainment does actually 
seem reasonable in light of the old original Enterprise's mission. They were constantly finding civilizations that appeared to emulate ancient Rome, some sort of 1930s world, even Nazi Germany, surprisingly enough, although that was more of a an example of the violation of the Prime Directive, as somebody for some reason thought it would be a good idea to base a civilization around Nazi Germany. Well, if it stands to reason then that maybe this is a welcome message. So do you think they're just sending back broadcasts to be like, hey, you guys made you guys made contact with us with these broadcasts, so we're going to make contact with you with these broadcasts? That'd be really fascinating, actually, to figure out where the broadcast shell is around this planet to see how far, how long ago they actually started picking up these messages. Considering their proximity to the Cardassian Union, much of their culture, if they did receive signals from the stars, might have been influenced by them. Oh, well, you mean like the, like the Enigma Tales? Yes, the Enigma Tales. Oh, what a, what a pointless exercise in futility. I don't mean you got to say this. I mean, there's something to be said for consistency. You, you know, you actually make a point because there was a there was like a a trial drama that was on, and it was a lot like um, like the last person to be on the trial actually got to flip a coin about whether or not they were indicted or not. Everybody else just got massacred. A coin. I think they have money on this planet still. But it's a lot like Cardassian and tribunals where you go in and you're guilty. And the tribunal is just for show. Well, that seems actually like the antithesis of a civilization that would predetermine the results of a trial. In this case, it's leaving it to blind random chance as a neutral arbiter of the issue and consideration, as opposed to the Cardassians who, as a regimental society, impose the government's will on the populace. Interesting from a sociological perspective, at least. But maybe it gets better ratings. If everything's predetermined, then nobody wants to tune in. If there's a chance, then people will watch. And on that note, uh, Jaro, your console begins to beep, uh, signaling that, and this is the complication from earlier, uh, oh, that chat redeemed. Ye, the radio signal is cutting in and out. Uh, specifically, you are no longer receiving a signal. It seems that the signal has gone dark, Captain. Can you ascertain the cause? Is it being jammed, or has the source itself terminated its transmission? Uh, he'll he'll uh, start uh, trying to find this information. Sure. Why don't you roll me a uh, insight engineering for this one? And I'll tell you what, the Congo will assist you with a communications and engineering. Uh, difficulty amazing. on this is only a one. It's amazing how much it helps when you're actually in the game. Eh, I have the oh. ship. Helps a little bit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I crew for ship. Okay, hold on. I'll get in there shortly. <laughs> a little scattered. All right, let's see. Sign out because I'm on the wrong account. <laughs> yep, and they're done that. Yeah, Captain, I can confirm. We're no longer receiving any broadcasts. All right. Sorry for the delay. No, you're fine. And the, the role was what again? Insight engineering difficulty of one. Roll the night. This is going to set the tone. See. Yeah, nothing I have is a focus. All right. Survey says oh, that's already two. There's three for the Congo. So, yeah, that gets you two momentum. And Jaro, it's not jammed. Uh, it's not like some other entity has started like to jam or drown out the signal. The signal has literally just stopped. Well, Captain... The signal is terminated at the source. Hmm. Commander Dottig, can you get any long-range sensor scans of the area? Is there any sign of some kind of natural disruption on the planet that might have accounted for this termination? Stand by, sir. And uh, Jim, I'd like to roll for that. Sure. Uh, I would say that this would be a reason science. The ship will assist you with a sensor science. 
This was originally going to be a difficulty of three. However, the Congo does have advanced sensor suites, bringing it down to a difficulty of two. Oh, cool. I have the ship. I'll, cool. I'll spend a point of momentum, and would my uh, focus in, excuse me, uh, astrophysics come into play here? It most definitely would. All right, well, that's, uh, let's see, four successes total, so you get two more momentum. You're up to four. And with that many successes, I think I'm going to preempt some of your free questions from being a science officer by giving you access to a handout. Uh, should be, do you see the handout? Uh, should be Uki Prime Got Scans. Got it. And if you want to flavor how you got that level of information, again, the Congo does have very advanced sensor suites. Captain, I'm able to perform a long-range scan of the planet, uh, reading 250 million life signs. Um, Dr. Allel was quite correct. They are serpentine in form, uh, reminiscent of... Other serpentine cultures, uh, most notably the Lamia of Terran mythology. You've got a general technological level uh, akin to that of Victorian era Earth. However, the level of technology is not equal. Some areas of the planet are approaching the level of, well, pre warp or even early warp travel. We... I'm picking up an alien ship in orbit, and it seems to be a way station of some type between these advanced zones in the ship. Uh, 500 life signs in orbit aboard the ship. Uh, interesting. Uh, different alien race aboard the ship and the shuttles. Hmm. It sounds almost as if this uh, alien race is providing advanced technologies to certain segments of the planet, perhaps using them as proxies for their interests on the world? Hmm. Perhaps. Captain, and we might be able to use the radio signal to determine a proximity of sorts to see how long ago this interference lasted or started. If you believe that you can uh, an assess the signal and uh, break it down in order to make that kind of determination, please, Chief, Just go ahead. The distance from the planet that the signal was broadcast to its cutoff time. Oh, I see. Uh, forgive me, I misunderstood your intentions. Um, doctor? And yeah, do you want that, that to be do? your uh, free question? Sure, that'll work. Cool. So, and I'm going to tell you something that's not going to make initial sense, and that's by design. If what you're reading is correct, Atig, the signal cut off about an hour ago, which does not make any sense based on any physics that exists. Mr. Tate, I'm transmitting you my readings. Can you double check my reasoning that does not seem possible uh, sir that's why I ask for a second opinion yeah these readings do not match any comparison I would make with it's, it's like their, their broadcasting was transmitting at subspace but it's not hmm. in order to, to, to clarify shut down an hour ago Captain, yes, these transmissions are barely an hour old. Hmm. It's possible that they might have been hyper-accelerated through some kind of subspace distortion field or a subspace compression wave, but our sensors likely would have picked that up. They could be being um, accelerated uh, through the alien spaceship acting as a communications hub. It's possible, although to what end? Well, we're on our way to find out. 
Or Should I increase we... speed, sir? Says Rowan as she sort of turns in her chair. There doesn't appear to be any significant reason why we should. We can continue on at our current pace. Um, assessments regarding the Prime Directive and its applicability in this case. It seems as if only general non-interference would be necessary, but given that this Victorian area culture is already aware of interstellar life forms, we may be able to introduce ourselves to them. So Certainly. long as we don't provide any additional like technology to them to accelerate their advancement, we can surely communicate with them. I'm not convinced that it's prudent to communicate directly with the people on the planet. Those in orbit, likely yes, their technology, well, to put it bluntly, Captain, they have warp capability, the Prime Directive, the, I suppose the no contact clause of the Prime Directive doesn't apply to them, but whatever the relationship between these two races, the lesser advanced race we could be contaminating some sort of symbiosis that we have no idea about. I would recommend, at the very least, observation first. A wise precaution, Commander, and I believe that ascertaining the nature of the relationship between these two peoples by engaging with the warp-capable civilization at first, at least, is the wisest course of action. Captain, I'd like to scan uh, alternate communications frequencies to, to see if we can intercept any other communications that may not be on the UHF bands for this, uh, this ship in orbit. Very good. Also try to determine if there are any communications currently between the ship and the planet itself. If we can learn something more about the relationship before we enter into contact with them, I think it would be beneficial to our attempts at opening up communications. Hi, sir. And I'm actually going to spend two threat that you get an answer for that fives. And the answer is, and this might be spoiling the mystery a little bit, but um, for those who don't know, uh, the old radio dramas when they did World of the War, War of the Worlds. God, I could speak today. <laughs> um, basically, the old, uh, I think it was Wells. Was it Wells who wrote that? Um, mm -hmm. But basically, when they did the radio drama of it, people thought it was real, and it caused, like, mass hysteria kind of a thing. So what I'm going to say... Is, this is where I'll point out that we actually discussed about doing a world, War of the Worlds oh, radio well, drama. Then we're, <laughs> we're actually pretty close, because you are detecting uh, something on a different band than the normal radio channel that would suggest that there is perhaps some conflict... Uh, some form of a war, something that would, in all honesty, suggest that something is amiss here. And, um, GM, uh, would these broadcasts be coming on a level of technology range between Victorian and Starfleet? More or less, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and just to clarify the nature of the conflict that's being described within those radio dramas or the signals... Is that a conflict of invasion or a suggestion that uh, like there's a conflict on the surface or is it almost like war of the worlds but real well not just real but also uh, there's a bifurcation of the world itself that some of them are assisting the aliens I actually have a little bit of a snippet uh, I'm not gonna play like six different roles but I do have a snippet prepared um, so we'll say the whole bridge here is this is five plays and, you know, reports and plays this message. And what you hear is a frantic uh, man's voice as he seems to be uh, shouting orders at what you presume are military members. And he says, I don't care what you have to do, damn it. We need that cliff. But, sir, there's no way we're going to get through the Zavik's reins. Well, I don't give a shit if the Zavik shoot at us with lasers and we only have muskets. We need that damn hill. Get it done, Johnson. And what I would note there is the word Johnson is the universal translator name, not the actual name of the species or the person involved. And 
there's more static, and then you hear what are basically sounds of explosions, sounds of musket fire, then pierced by what might be reminiscence of a disruptor, and eventually you hear a cry of agony, and you hear the same first voice, the commanding one, uh, much more panicked, much more in pain, and he says something along the lines of, damn it, damn it, this is too soon, this is too soon, I... Oh, I, my wife, uh, tell her, tell her that I, and then there's a disruptor fire and the message goes dead. Ensign Rowan, increase to warp nine. Aye, sir. Uh, ETA is about five minutes. Very good. I'm going to cross-reference the Zavix and all of our cultural and xenolinguistic databases. That's a whole lot of nothing. Cross-reference complete. We have no information on the Zavix, sir. And, Captain, I, I'd be more used to you in engineering. If you believe that to be the case, Ensign, uh, please keep an open comm link with the bridge so that you can be apprised of any new developments. Uh, uh, of course, sir. And he nervously leaves the bridge. Noted. Keep a comm line open. Um... GM, am I able to, mm -hmm. now that we sort of have a little bit more information, can I refine my scan mm -hmm. um, to, I want to try to isolate if there's actually um, live weapons fire in sort of large pockets, sort of reminiscent of pitched battles or uh, sieges occurring on the planet. Let's have you roll a insight in science. I'm going to say that the ship will assist you with a probably a sensor security because this is a weapons. And then I'm going to set the difficulty at a four here. Okay. Um, and that's after accounting for advanced sensors. So it was a five. Okay. It comes down to a four. I have the ship. Uh, okay. I'll... Yeah, you know, I really want to get this information, so if nobody minds, I'm going to spend three momentum for an extra two dice. Okay. And... Don't have a focus for this one. I mean, hey, there's already four or five successes, so you actually get one momentum back. You're not detecting wide-scale weapons fire but you are detecting in those same areas or at least neighboring to those areas that are, uh, as you said, approaching early warp uh, in comparison to the Victorian era. Um, there are weapons fire signs uh, around those areas. And um, would... Would these um, Olki, these these serpent people, are they the only belligerents in those conflict zones, or are some of these other aliens there as well? I would say that your scans are inconclusive on that note. It's it, it doesn't make any sense, Captain. If one side would have been aided. I mean, you heard it yourself, lasers versus muskets. There is no comparison. There, the only reason that a sustained conflict would be ongoing, to my mind, would be that somebody wanted it to continue in that way. Holding back, as it were. The ship in orbit is more than capable of planetary bombardment. That's not unheard of in the histories of most civilizations, including that of Terra. A uh, highly advanced civilization would provide minute technical advantages or advantages in weapons technologies to one side of a conflict in order to keep them dependent. Uh, if the war were to conclude, then a potential market would be eliminated. It's grotesque. It Sir, would I... oh, sorry. Go ahead. Apologies, Commander. Please go ahead. I was just going to clue up by saying. 
if this is indeed the case, then this relationship would not be symbiotic, but parasitic, and I believe intervention, at least diplomatically, would be warranted. I don't believe that we would have jurisdiction in the same way that the Federation chose to ignore the Cardassians' occupation of my own homeworld. But some kind of diplomatic overture would no doubt be appropriate, at least. Um, Chief, you had a concern to voice? Uh, not necessarily a concern, sir. Um, as, as you know, my time with the Borg, I was a tactical drone sent to prepare species for assimilation and determine their assimilation quotient. I would like to prepare a sociocultural profile of the species based on the information that we have and the records we have obtained in recording their broadcasts. Excellent. It may, uh, it may take some time, but uh, we'll have a better idea of the people that we are going uh, to try and help. Very good. Um, I'd ask you to tap the resources of Ensign uh, Prin, I believe it was, in uh, the Cultural Studies Department. He should be able to assist you. Hi, sir. And Ensign Rowan turns and reports, uh, Sir, we're coming up upon visual range, dropping at a warp at the edge of system. Very good. As soon as we're within range, please open hailing frequencies to the vessel in orbit. All right. So let's actually switch to this map for this instance. So the uh, system in question is fairly simple, all things considered. Uh, there is a single G-class star and one singular planet. Uh, the planet itself is actually about the size of Earth's moon, um, but it is reading as a class M. And what really is a striking feature of the planet is it is almost a blood red uh, crimson planet uh, from the clouds to the rivers to the uh, general ground dirt color. Uh, it's all shades of red. Um, whereas, you know, obviously Earth is shades of blue and green, this one entirely reds. The other thing that sort of stands out to you is obviously the alien ship in orbit. And the ship in orbit uh, vaguely uh, would remind you of perhaps some form of a cephalopod. At least I think that's what they're called. Basically a squid uh, in that they have sort of an arrowhead uh, type front with uh, phalanges or otherwise the small tendrils that trail out from that head towards the back of the of the ship. Uh, the back of the ship tapers towards the back. Well, there's a tautology. Um, and is, if you had to put it in scale size, this squid-like ship is about the size of an old Constitution class. And you can confirm, uh, both visually and on sensors, that there are uh, constant streams of shuttles, uh, more or less the same design as the larger ship, uh, going from the ship down to the planet at this point. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is spend two threat that when you drop at a warp and begin scanning, etc., etc., uh, fives will detect that the alien ship's weapons are powered, but not directed at you all, if that makes any sense. Captain, their weapons appear to be online and ready. Recommend yellow alert? I was about to order that uh, exact same thing. Chief, take us to yellow alert, but do not activate any of our weapon systems. Aye, sir. And Rowan turns. Do you, do you still want that hail, sir? All the more so, yes. Please, Ensign. All right. She taps a few buttons. Uh, channel open. And Lee will rise and do the Picard maneuver as he straightens his shirt. To the unidentified vessel in orbit of the nearby planet, this is Captain Lee of the Federation starship Congo. We're on a peaceful mission of exploration in this area of, ga of the... Uh, quadrant and have picked up the radio transmissions emanating from this world. We would like to open a dialogue with you and your people. All right. So you actually do get a visual response and I have a handout for this. 
So the creature that appears uh, on the view screen um, is, I, I hesitate to use the word alien, but uh, there really is no better way to define it in a simple term. Um, what is interesting about this species is it still is humanoid, but the facial features are, well, perhaps there's a lack of them would be a better way to put it. Um, the face is smooth, uh, where you might expect a nose or a mouth. Uh, you're just seeing two nostrils and no signs of any consume, like a normal mouth would be used to eat, etc., etc. You're not seeing any of that. Um, you're seeing just sort of a smooth, if somewhat ridged, uh, face of sorts. The eyes are pools of black, and the head itself is structured almost like a, a starfish in that it has five points uh, that sort of spray out in a large crest that so comes from the facial region up to uh, almost like an alien, like Geiger alien style uh, towards the back of the head. Um, they have two very prominent ears uh, that are vaguely of the same design, so it's about three to five points on the ears. And what you're noticing is that they do appear to have some ornamentation uh, attached to each of these points, uh, both on the head and on the ears. Uh, the ornamentation is reminiscent of earth earrings, um, except these are circular uh, sort of rings with spheres in the middle of them held by strands of what might be string. Uh, they also do appear to be wearing ornamental robes of some sort, along with what might be uh, almost like a pearl... Uh, or something similar to a pearl necklace, uh, along with other jeweled ornamentation. And what I would say is when they speak, you're not really understanding where the noise is coming from. Uh, if anything, it just sort of seems to be omnipresent, uh, obviously still coming through the view screen, but you're not able to like figure out where the noise is coming from as they speak. In any case, the creature on the view screen uh, simply says, uh, Hello, uh, my name is Captain Nate of the ZIV Chem. Uh, we are delighted to find another alien species. Uh, you said you wish to open a peaceful dialogue. Well, that is our mission. Uh, how can we facilitate this? Typically, our cultures exchange generalized information regarding the organization of our society and by way of data transfer. Uh, data transfer, um, okay. Um, I honestly, it, this is, uh, this is new for me. Um, I, I, I have no problem admitting that, uh, this is sort of my first mission out and that this is, uh, my home world, the the Zavik. Uh, this is our first warp capable ship, so I'm I'm not really sure what the protocol here, or if we have to do anything special, or. Rest assured, Captain, it uh, it gets easier. You've uh, taken your species' first steps into a much larger galaxy, and uh, there are many species, many cultures, waiting for you. Well, that's that's good. Um. And he kind of looks off screen, or at least you think it's a he. The voice sounds masculine. Uh, it sort of looks off screen and then sort of looks back at the screen and says, Well, uh, our sensors are detecting that you have quite the advanced vessel, Captain. Um, are you like us? Do you perhaps come to planets like Oki Prime and uplift the species there? An interesting term. Uh, could you elaborate on what you mean? Well, um, it is sort of something that the Zavik uh, mandated when we first journeyed to the stars, that uh, if we ever found a, I, I don't like to use the word lesser, but a lesser species, that we would help them. We wouldn't force them to go through the same technical trials that the Zavik went through to achieve warp flight. Interesting. Was that... Um a particularly arduous process for your people? Let's just say that without going into long stories, 
Oh, there were many trials and setbacks that led to unnecessary loss of life. And let's just say we thought that it would be better if we could help species from having to go through that themselves. An interesting perspective. All of the representative species, and he'll gesture around the room indicating the Denobulan, the Cation, himself, the Bajoran, um, and the other sort of myriad races here. All of the species within our Federation, an aggregation of various different worlds that have banded together for scientific exploration of the galaxy, are developed warp capabilities or interstellar travel in various ways independently before they were welcomed into our much larger organization. One of our greatest maxims, our overriding ethos, is that we avoid engaging with other species in any way that might compromise or in other way disrupt their development, including offering them technological assistance. I see, I see. Um, oh, I actually am getting a communication from Queen Alusa. She wishes to speak with you. Is this a representative from the world around which you are orbiting? Uh, Oki Prime, yes. Hmm. Please give me a moment to uh, converse with some of my senior officers. Of course, of course. Uh, take your time. And you. uh, Rowan gets the hint and puts you on pause. Or, well, let me ask this. Would you prefer her to cut the view screen completely or simply just put you on mute? Um, I would have her cut the view screen completely. Got it. So you just basically return to an image of the planet itself. Opinions, assessments of this cultural enterprise that they're embarking on of uplifting civilizations? Unconscionable. I disagree. I'm... An odd thing for a Starfleet officer? It's kind of what, I mean, with the exception that, you know, the Borg threw them into a hive mind, basically found species with novel technology and whether or not they had achieved warp flight, they were elevated. So I can kind of see both sides. And um, I, I don't know how it's worked out. I need to know more information about their conquests of other planets, if, if that's what we want to call them. Well, I don't really think it's... <laughs> So Starfleet and the Federation have a multitude of things that they say, no, no, don't do that. But I mean, Denobulans have been genetic engineering for a very long time, simply because our instincts were are synchronized with our intellect by the time we got it under our wings. So who's to say that their method of doing things is better or worse? The way well, they... F uh, I apologize, Captain, but... Not at all, Lieutenant. I, I want to hear your perspective. I would retort that the individuals that are quite possibly being murdered with weapons provided by this enlightened and uplifting benevolent race may disagree that we can't say if it's better or worse. Well, there are exceptions to every rule. <laughs> Quite Respectfully, so. Doctor, I don't agree with that, but you're entitled to be wrong. Thank you, sir. A.K.A. the polite way of shut up, Doctor. <laughs> Sick bird, man. At least she's the doctor and can take care of that. <laughs> if she Analogies wants are to. Objections to contacting or opening a dialogue with the queen of this world, or at least one of its polities. I would... At this point, it's clear that irreparable cultural contamination has already happened. I'm not sure how much more damage we can do. Agreed, Doctor. Excuse me. Lieutenant Commander. All right, Ensign Rowan, please reopen the channel. 
Aye, sir. And uh, true to form, um, what I would say is you don't actually get uh, Captain Nate on the screen again. Uh, you are taken on the view screen to what appears to be the interior of a throne room. And when I say throne room, I mean like, think literally a European, if not British throne room, where it's a wide open space. Uh, there's Corinthian columns. Uh, there are opulent rugs on the floor. Uh, there's ornamentation of golds and reds that are pretty much everywhere um, against these sort of dark black marbles. Um, but what's interesting is the people that inhabit this space. And I have a handout for this as well. So sort of flanking the main sort of thoroughfare uh, that leads to the Grand Throne are indeed the Lamia-like serpentine uh, creatures that you assume must be the Olki. Um, they are wearing what appears to be uh, somewhat advanced for Victorian era, quote unquote, uh, era armor where it is both metal and exotic materials that would suggest that they have some form of uh, advanced mining technique or refining technique. Um, but what probably catches your attention is not the armor itself, but the fact that their hair or what fares for hair is actually uh, like a Medusa from Earth's history, meaning that their hair ends in living serpentine heads, like snake heads, basically. Again, Medusa. And you see about maybe about 10 of these guards that lead up to the throne itself. And on the throne uh, is a uh, larger uh, individual, but unlike what you would expect for a queen, um, rather than opulent robes, rather than uh, ornamentation or something to indicate that they are, you know, someone to be uh, feared or respected, they actually are wearing a very simple black cloth robe. And as they sort of come onto the view screen, um, they sort of rise up from their seat and sort of look out at you. And let me actually put her token on the screen. And her snake head sort of swivel around to give you almost the full attention uh, that they can afford. And Queen Elusa speaks and says, Hello, I understand that you are a new species come to visit Ulki Prime. I am Queen Elusa of the Ulki. Uh, how might we facilitate you today? Your Highness, my name is Captain Lee of the Federation Starship Congo. We are indeed representatives of a peaceful exploratory compact, uh, an aggregation of various different races that have banded together to assist each other in exploring each other's cultures and the universe more broadly. Um, we would simply like to know more about your people and to facilitate the establishment of diplomatic relationships. I see. Should we be expecting a delivery of technology from your ship as well? Our culture does not take kindly to sharing technologies unless there is a, a relative equal or equality in the level of development between the two parties. Um, that is not something that you should expect from us. Although we are quite interested in the arrangement that you have made with the ZIV Chem and its crew. I see, I see. You appear to be a very cautious individual. Perhaps that extends to your federation as well. Uh, our arrangement with the Zavik is quite simple. They are providing us a means to eventually explore the, explore the stars in a ship similar to their own. Hmm. And what have they received in return? What kind of arrangement have you made with them? Is this simply largesse on their part? I'm not familiar with that word. Uh, is it uh, simply generosity on their part? Ah, I see. I would describe it as such, yes. Interesting. We've also noticed that your planet seems to be undergoing some form of conflict at the moment. Could you elaborate on that? 
and she sort of looks at her guards and her guards sort of look at each other and their snake heads, you know, kind of look in different directions. And then she doesn't seem to get an answer and she kind of looks back at you and says, as far as I'm aware, we don't have any open conflicts occurring on the world currently. Indeed. Dr. Uh, Alel and uh, Chief, uh, excuse me, uh, Lieutenant Commander Dottig, could you um, pull up the information necessary to uh, substantiate our claims and put it onto the screen? Hi, sir. All right. So you put up the scans that uh, obviously that there's some form of weapons fire occurring. And uh, Queen Elusa sort of looks at this information and kind of nods and says, Ah, you are seeing our weapons testing facilities. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that's perfectly normal. I see. Commander, please. Uh, Your Majesty... Are these live fire exercises? Uh, to, to whom do I have the pleasure of addressing? Apologies. My name is Lieutenant Commander Akib Dateg. I'm the first officer of this starship and a... a student of cultures. Well, to answer your question, Mr. Dateg, yes, these are live fire exercises. And... May I ask who your opposing force is in these exercises? Are they perhaps convicts or I'm, prisoners? Perhaps there's an issue in translation for which I will apologize, but there are no sides to this conflict. Uh, we are simply testing weapons technology for perhaps not immediate use, but for simple self-defense. Ah, so all parties concerned are willing participants? Again, maybe there's an issue in translation, but there are no participants that would be needing to provide consent. And yeah, I, I see you guys in chat there. Um, Alel, I would like you to... Actually, I tell you what. Um, because we haven't heard from Jaro in a while, I'm going to spend two threat that something begins to mess with the sensors. And Jaro's going to notice this first, um, specifically that the fidelity of the sensors um, and the power being fed to the sensors is being drained in some way, shape, or form. And we'll resolve that, then we'll return to this conversation. So... We're yeah, we're losing, we're losing sensor power. I I I'm I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I got it. Thank you, Ensign. <laughs> Your Highness, there seems to be some sort of issue on my vessel. If you would give me a moment to resolve it, and then we can resume our conversation. I apologize. Of course, take your time. Thank you. And Rowan looks at you off on. All right, mutes it. She doesn't know hand signals. She does. She's new. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but yeah, Jaro. Um, I guess my question here is: Would you be more concerned with the why, or would you be more concerned with stopping whatever the drain is? Uh. Why not both? First things first is why. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as I uh, messaged you actually earlier, I did see that, already yeah. he had already been starting to shore up power supplying yeah. and things of that nature. So right now he's more worried about why okay, or uh, how and where type situation. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to highlight this, because I, I wanted to come out of your mouth, not my mouth. <laughs> Sounds better that way. But uh, the way we'll do this is we'll start you off with a reason engineering. Uh, difficulty on this will be a two. And let me just double check your focuses here. 
because I believe you might have one. Uh, yes, you have warp field technology, which would apply here. All right. I will uh, use one momentum. Okay. And what was the difficulty again? Difficulty is a two. Okay. And does the ship assist at all? or? I'm going to say no, not in this instance. This okay. is purely whether or not you can sort of glean from what remains of the sensor data what's happening. Well, I did get my two successes. That you did. So what you notice, Jaro, is the star of this system seems to be throwing off a unique solar wind. And this is not unlike an ion storm, but it is one of those things where this does appear to be a simply, well, to use the term, quote unquote, natural event. This is not an attack. This is not a weapon. This is simply just a feature of the area. We are being bombarded by an ion storm from the from the star here, sir. Um, I'd suggest if we could, at least for now, put the planet between us and the sun for at least some uh, shielding while I work on uh, shoring up our systems. Very good. A uh, slight modification to the shields, which I believe are still in operation. Is that correct, Lieutenant Vibes? You have not uh, lowered them? That is correct, Captain. Very good. Should be able to also provide us with some enhanced protection. Ensign Rowan, uh, please make the necessary course corrections to place uh, the planet between us and the solar winds. And Commander Dottig, is the uh, the chem being influenced by these solar winds, or have they actually already adapted to them? Can you determine that? DM, can I make a roll for that? Yeah. If you want to roll me uh, reason and science, uh, difficulty of one. And there's your one success. Uh, the chem don't seem to be affected. They just sort of still floating around, and even their small craft are doing fine and the one thing i would highlight is that even a minor ion storm for a federation shuttle big deal huge deal um interesting do they have some form of perhaps metaphasic shielding that you're not 100% sure of cuz again uh the sensors are still sensors. being drained even with jaro's preemptive sort of uh, power generation, it is still, your sensors are not helping you. And that's why the ship hasn't been assisting you because the power is whack right now. Uh, Captain, the the chem, as well as its smaller shuttles, are unaffected by the solar wind. With the decrease in sensor output, I can't be more specific than that. Very good. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander. Doctor, have you investigated the matter that I asked you to address? Sorry, so our sensors were down. Jam, are they back up, or are we still dealing with it? Uh, you're still dealing with it. You still can attempt the task. It's just difficult, is the thing here. I can try, sir. I might not have any luck due to the uh, extenuating circumstances with our uh. sensors, but... And then belay that order, unless you have something to add, Lieutenant Commander. I was just going to ask if the if the GM was going to call for a roll. Could I assist instead of the ship? I would say it would either be you or Jaro assisting. Yeah. But yeah, just so you have the option of it, uh, this would be a reason medicine, and the difficulty on this would be a three. When you said difficult, I thought, like, difficulty five, difficulty six. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then please, go right ahead. All right. I'll, I can roll. Uh, you want a momentum for that as well? Sure. What am I rolling again? Uh, you're rolling a reason medicine. Okay. And I am attempting to t detect if life forms are fading. 
Correct. If any life forms are dying in those are associated dying. areas where they're testing weapons. Supposedly. Okay. okay. Uh, xenobiology? I'll give it to you. Okay. Um, John, do you want to assist on this? I'm rolling no, you, three. You can do it. You oh, can take okay. it. Okay. Uh, all right, well, there's the three already. And, GM, what would you like me to assist with? For you, let's have you roll a reason science on your side. Okay, I'd also like to point out that I also have the xenobiology focus. Go for it. All right. Reason. I would laugh if you rolled a complication. I'm just going to throw it out there. No, you roll a, a critical success. Uh, so you actually get two momentum back for that. And uh, what I'm going to say before we go to break is that, Alel, you're detecting that there are life forms being destroyed in the weapon testing facilities, but they're not Zavik, they're not Ulki, they're something else entirely. Pachorin. <laughs> no, they're not Pachorin. <laughs> Are we going to cut there? Uh, well, I'm going to let you say a few things, perhaps to the captain, and finish sure, the yeah. queen conversation, and then okay. we'll go to break. All right. Um, so she looks to the captain. We're still muted, right? Yep. Uh, there are life forms, some that are different than what we've detected before, but life forms nonetheless that are being destroyed. It could simply be that they're experimenting on non-sapient creatures. Nonetheless, that's still a rather barbaric practice. Can you further refine those results? Well, what I'm going to say, because we just had a point redeem, is that the evil power activates of the universe, and um, at that point, your sensors go kaput completely. Your sensors are gone. You are essentially flying blind right now. But you do Sir's get a momentum. You do get a momentum. <laughs> Sir, sensors are completely down now. I don't think I could... I was lucky to get what I did. Very good, Doctor. Thank you. Continue trying to analyze whatever data that you've got. See if you can put anything together. Ensign Rowan, please uh, put the Queen back on the screen. Aye, sir. And you have a line to Elusa again. Hello, Your Highness. My apologies for this slight delay. It is perfectly acceptable. We would like to continue this conversation. However, um, my people believe that uh, these kinds of negotiations and discussions are better carried out in person. Would you be willing to allow a small party from my vessel to beam down or to transport down to your planet in order to meet with you? transport i'm not familiar with this word as well i do again apologize for the translation difficulties i am unsure if that is on our end or your end they haven't compromised our ability to engage with each other and these kinds of difficulties are commonplace when new cultures are beginning to acclimatize to each other hmm i see i would assume then that this is some form of technology like a shuttle? We have multiple means of uh, transporting ourselves down to your planet. Uh, if you would prefer, we can certainly take a shuttlecraft down. I'm interested to see this technology firsthand. Very well. Would you then acquiesce to the request to allow a small away team to beam down to your planet and meet with you? You may beam directly to my throne room. And at this, some of her guard, like, look at each other excitedly, like, what, 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 did did she just kind of, you know, there's that kind of excited head turn and nod and whispered discussion. Thank you. Uh, my first officer will be representing me as I continue negotiations and conversation with uh, the captain of the chem, if that is acceptable to you. It's perfectly acceptable. I look Very forward good. to your delegation's arrival. Very good. Ensign Rowan? Oh, that's the sign to turn it off. Got it. Yep, yep. Did it. Did it. We're good. We're good. Very good, Ensign. Thank you. Yes. But 
sir, I'm I'm just gonna point out one thing. How are we beaming down if we don't have sensors? And that's where we're gonna take our break. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back in about five to ten minutes, everybody. Stick around.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, let's just say that the players have found themselves in the interesting scenario where they have encountered uh, two new alien species and might be preparing a lecture or two about the value of the Prime Directive. But uh, as we sort of resume our session, we're going to cut to the main engineering of the Congo where Jaro is trying his damnedest to get the sensors back up and running after they went down. Now uh, I do have to say chat did redeem another uh, momentum and complication. Um, so you guys do get one momentum and what I'm going to say is the complication Jaro is that you're having to choose where the power's coming from. And what I'm going to say on that is whatever department you pull power from is going to suffer for it um so you actually do have to pick a department of the ship either command con science engineering medicine whichever department you pick is going to suffer a com a large complication range until the power is fixed kind of a thing mm -hmm. captain uh jaro here uh need you to make a call on which department is going to lose some power for me to get sensors back on. And it's I was going to pull it from I was going to pull it from Astrometrics, but you know, last time you asked me to make sure. Indeed, and considering the astrological phenomenon that we've detected in the system, I would be loath to lose anything from that department just in case we need to try to combat its effects. Oh, there you go. Take power from the tactical systems. From the isolated phaser banks? Uh, deflectors and shields. Given the technological Ooh. development of this species, I don't think they're going to pose that much of a threat to us. And there's no indication that hostilities are going to erupt. That's exactly when they happen, though, sir. All right, I'll take care of it. All right. So, Jaro, uh, I'm going to give you an option here, and I think I already know your answer. Do you want a single high difficulty, or do you want the extended task? Uh, we're going to go uh, single high difficulty. All right. So, in this instance, then, uh, it's going to be a daring engineering. Uh, it is going to be a difficulty of five. And this is going to represent you not only shunting power from the tactical systems, but also doing some creative work uh, with the EPS conduits and uh, let's just say some creative applications of shield technology around the sensor readouts as well. Okay. Um, he is going to uh, spend a moment, uh, spend a determination. Okay. Uh, and the determination is engineering is my new home. Okay. And I will also spend the momentum to get the third die. Okay. So I believe that brings you down to uh, two momentum total. Yep, 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 yep. And you're right, you are right, Chad. It's usually the best step where the extended tasks happen. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, five successes, so you do succeed. So Jaro, um, would you like to provide additional flavor, or should I? Yeah, uh, so Jaro, uh, Jaro calls up the captain again. Uh, captain, I've, I've made the necessary adjustments, uh, but like you said, you'd be lucky to get 10% out, out of the shields at this point, but we are able to, we are able to get the sensors back online, so it should help considerably with us uh, being able to target ourselves down there with the transporters now. I I am planning on taking transporter uh, enhancers um, when I go down uh, just as a precaution uh, I, unless you don't want me to. No, I think that's a very prudent course of action, Ensign, and I admire your initiative. Thank you for the suggestion and good work restoring sensor functionality. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. Uh, I'll I'll be here to help out. Are you not uh, joining the away team itself? Uh, not that I was aware of. It's well, probably right but... about then that Mr. Dottick walks into main engineering. 
No, I think he would be on his way to the transporter room and just sort of slap his cow badge and say, "Okay." Actually, you know what? No, let's let's walk in there. Let's have a nice. Let's walk in. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, you'll walk little, in there. Let's have a little tete a tete. Mister Jero, I'll need uh, three transporter pattern enhancers. Oh, of course. Um, he gathers them up and leads uh, uh, hands them to one of the other uh, one of the other engineers. Um, can you bring these down uh, to with uh, Mister Datek? What's wrong with her legs? Uh, well, I figure I have to send an engineer with you, sir. I agree. That would be you. Oh, uh, uh, sir. Uh, respectfully, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think you want me down down there. Well, Mister Jaro, on any other day, you may be correct, but in Starfleet, we must often do many things that we don't want to do. So I reiterate: please report to transport room three. Yes, sir. And he gathers the transport enhancers himself, and uh, and uh, as soon as he steps out of engineering carrying the transport enhancers, he kind of fumbles them a little bit, um, but makes his way to the transporter room. And just so I have everybody in the away team correct, uh, I currently have uh, Dottig, Jaro, Fives, Prin. Uh, is Alel coming or is Alel staying on the ship? Alel's oh, she's, definitely coming. She's, she's coming. Okay, wanted to be sure. I need yeah. my doctor. All right. <laughs> doctor, doctor. So since this is uh, the first time we see Prin, uh, would you care to describe Prin for us there, Matthew? Certainly. Um, Korat Prin is a somewhat strangely elderly um, Cardassian male who is still an ensign. He looks like he's in his mid-30s, and no, for the, all of those who are older than that, that is not an insult against you, but it's strange that he's still an ensign. Uh, he has slightly graying hair, and he's remarkably robust. He seems like a somewhat heavyset squat uh, Cardassian who is in that traditional Cardassian mold uh, quite apparently effervescent in his gestures and his body language. Interesting, interesting. And we're now going to cut to the throne room as you do successfully beam on down. And yeah, it is what you saw on the view screen. You do see again those sort of dark features to the throne room. You see Ulki guard flanking both sides of the carpet that leads up to the queen. And as you all materialize, uh, there are not really shouts of alarm, because they were expecting some grand display of technology. Um, but there are noticeable whispers and discussion, like, did you see that? Did you see that? Yeah, they appeared out of thin air. How did they do that? I don't know. And this continues until the queen, uh, now seated on her throne, kind of sort of slashes across her, uh, her chest with her fist, and everything goes quiet at that motion. And... As silence falls, she then takes that fist, opens it up towards you all in a welcoming gesture and says, Hello again in person, Mr. Dottig. Uh, who do I have the pleasure of also having in my throne room? Uh, yes, uh, Your Majesty. May I present our Chief Engineer, Ensign Jaro, our Chief of Security, Lieutenant Tate, and uh, his adjutant, Mr. Prin, as well as our ship's physician, Dr. Alelo. I see. Welcome to Oki Prime. And one important thing that I think I've forgotten to say this entire time. The Oki up to this point have seemed like, yeah, they're maybe about six, seven feet tall. A little bit, a <laughs> little bit on the on the, the taller side Small. in person. Hobbit sized. Small snakes. Well, it is most agreeable to be with you here today and uh, begin what I will hope to be a fruitful discussion. Of course. Uh, where would you like to begin? And he'll just sort of turn to his officers and say, recommendations. 
Um, well, the, I, li the life signs, sir. Oh, it's just deaths. Uh, what's the point? I'd be far more interested in the iconography of these ornate armors that they're wearing, the ceremonial accoutrements. Could you tell us something about your background, the evolution of this symbology here? Oh, well, the... Uh... And again, when I say this next word, it's a translation error. It's not me mixing things up. The Ushan is something we've had since our early days, uh, once we became sentient in a way. It is something we have carried since our very early days. Uh, I could recount the tale of uh, one of our great warriors, uh, David, again, translation error, that once toppled a great beast known as Ephes. I, forgive me for speaking out of turn again, Doctor, but I would be most fascinated at uh, observing any of these legends uh, or getting a cultural database. Ella will try and scan now that they're on the planet for more details without okay. asking. Without asking? All right. So what I'm going to say then, there is a complication range on this of 18 to 20, okay. but uh, if you want to roll a reason medicine, uh, difficulty of three on this one. I would like to spend a momentum. Okay, you're down to one. Okay. Uh, xenobiology or no? Nah? I'll give it Probably to you. Probably not. Okay. Hey, there's three successes. Great. Um, what I would say is that now that you're on the planet and you're a little bit closer to what's going on, mm -hmm. you are detecting that the lower life forms, as you seem to have been, you know, drawn to that conclusion, uh, let's just say not quite dolphins, but not quite cows in level of intelligence. So take that as you will. You are You're muted. muted. Um, uh, she'll wait for a chance to tell Dotik. And Jaro's also basically just scanning to know what kind of power uh, power they use, things of that nature. Well, Jaro, what I would say for you is that, uh, as you can sort of see in the image, there are what appear to be either ceremonial or actual functional uh, torches and basins of fire that are spaced throughout the room. But when you run a low level scan with your tricorder, you do detect that same like NX era level technology throughout what you're assuming is a grand castle of sorts uh, where you've been down into. Though what I would okay. say, Jaro, is because you're the engineer, you're pretty sure that outside this throne room that moving around is going to be an issue for most people. Because again, small snake, smaller architecture design, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, are, we, are we stuck in this room? <laughs> just my crouch. throne room! The, the of throne room ass. has become a prison. <laughs> yes, very there much so. Um, so uh, Alel will kind of like take her medical tricorder that's like finished the scan that she detected and kind of like, like lean it in front of Dottig and I'm sure he would be able to read and understand those readings as a doctor himself. And I will say while this is going on, Prin is basically still creating a distraction by just like gushing over the armor, asking questions about the various different uh, icons and symbols, still curious about this ritualistic process of the Ushan or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that, again, either it's a translation error or something is just not right here. Either way, the queen basically recounts the entire tale of David and Goliath. It's just supposedly with the Olki instead of humans. And just for my clarification, mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I'm behind the eight ball on this one. Um, the scans, Allel's scans indicated that there weren't any well, sapient creatures being killed? Not sapient. Well, less intelligent than a dolphin, more intelligent than a cow. Okay. Correct. So. So, uh, 
like not sapient. No. And uh, yeah, Dante will nod, and he'll um, regard uh, Ensign Prin and uh, say, Ensign, uh, a moment, if you, if you would. Oh, yes, of course. And he sort of pulls back from one of the guards that he's been examining far too closely and uh, returns to the lieutenant commander. Uh, yes, th- it's such a fascinating culture, isn't it? This strange interweaving of archetypal mythologies that parallel Earth development. It's Yes, can you stand over there, please? Well, it will give me less of a you know beneficial view of the tapestries, but if you wish. Yes, it's... I'm going to take that as an order and not a suggestion. Okay. <clears throat> Quite so. And we'll, we'll do so. And um, I suppose Dating will, will regard the queen again. And say, uh, your Highness, uh, forgive me. Are you properly addressed as your Highness, your Majesty, your Grace? I, any of those would be acceptable. Uh, something perhaps I should say is that we... Ulki do not view the queen role as something to be lauded. It is a great burden, a perhaps a sacrifice in a way that someone must take upon this mantle and serve their people. Uh, very admirable. Uh, regardless, uh, position of authority is one to be respected. Even as though you were a civil servant. <clears throat> Your Majesty, I'm very curious, and I know my captain would be as well, to glean some history of your dealings with uh, your benefactors, the Zavok. Could you provide us a historical overview of your relations? Hmm. Where to begin? Where to begin? They appeared approximately one month ago. Again, there's that subtle change in the Universal Translator that, again, might indicate there's a translation error. And I'm highlighting this for a reason. We'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes, but I'm highlighting it for a reason. They appeared about a month ago, and uh, once we established an initial dialogue, uh, the Zavik were very happy and, in fact, almost adamant to share technology, to more or less uplift us. Very well. And I only ask out of uh, curiosity. My own, our own federation takes the view that uh, culture should be permitted to advance on its own. Growing pains included, if you forgive a metaphor. Uh, hmm. So this uh, almost uh, diametric opposite is fascinating to us in a way. Well, something we have learned is that cultures are different, and it is not unlike the Tower of Babylon. Again, translation error. Interesting. Is everybody else's universal translator picking that up too? Yes, there have been numerous references to things like the Ushan, which is an Andorian concept, Mm -hmm. and the stories that they're telling, as I said, are almost identical to Terran myths. Lieutenant Commander, I can begin compiling a more concise uh, translation, if you wish, and see if we can clear up our universal translators. Yes, uh, please do. uh, Mr. Jaro, could you please assist him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir. And he fumbles with his engineering tools. All right, yeah, yeah, we can do this. And I was waiting for this complication. The complication is, as you open your engineering tri- uh, toolkit, all the tools and tricorders and doodads inside fall to the floor. <sighs> he, he starts picking them all up. And what I would say, actually, is in, as you're doing this, uh, one of the nearby guards actually starts to try to help you. 
And my question is, do you let her? Uh, uh, this is where fives would step in graciously. Okay. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's not needed. I, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, you know, inconvenience you. Uh, your help is appreciated, uh, but we will take care of this on our own. It is part of our agreements with our captain that we take care of our own uh, tools. And again, with the mask on their face, you can't totally read their faces, but they do nod and their mouth becomes more of a line than a smile or a frown. And they just sort of go back to standing upright on the edges of the room. Uh, So a level kind of step forward and address Mm -hmm. the queen. Your grace. Are the creatures you're using to test your weapons... Are they being hunted for sport or to be consumed for sustenance? They are dear to us. Again, translation error. Wait, dear or dear? They are sentimental. D E E D E E R. She would ask for a synonym for crime. They are cattle. Again, translation error. And so you are consuming them after using weapons to destroy them. Well, yes, they're quite effective at cooking the meat. I see. She uh, turns back to her comrades, approaches Dante, looks up at him. It seems we've stumbled across a sort of barbecue. And at this point, and this is open to anyone who wants to do the role here, anyone who wants to do an insight command at a difficulty of four, if you have anthropology, if you have anything related to translation, language, linguistics, anybody can roll this. But only one person can assist you if you decide to go for it. So keep that in mind. Again, it is an insight command here. Uh, I feel like everybody's looking at me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the only other person with command. Oh, you are. You are us. the XO. I, I guess I am. Um, you said insight plus command. Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I do have I do have anthropology and linguistics. That would definitely help you here. Okay. Could I make an argument that Korat Prin is a student of culture and he has cultural studies as a focus? Could we go reason science or insight science to try to cross-reference these things with various different mytho-historical indexes from the races that he's familiar with? I'll give it to you, yeah. You can do an insight science as an assist. Unless somebody else has stronger sort of combination of values or foci. All right, we'll go. Also, you only have the one momentum right now because you did take transporter enhancers. Right. Um, all right, so I'll roll an insight plus command with my focus. Um, I would also like to <clears throat> uh, tap a value for determination. Okay. Um, and the uh, the value that I'm going to uh, be tapping is. Um, it best um, I'll do let's do feelings are secondary to facts alrighty momentum and threat for that as well to buy another die yeah I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy a third die okay. all right uh, my justification for that value is although dotig is put off um, ethically and morally by what he perceives to be going on here um, that it may not be what he feels it is so mm-hmm. well, he wants to wants to give them the benefit of the doubt there's my command there's command all right we're gonna do that 
I already have one assist from Pren. So actually, you just need to roll one success, and you get a grand total of six successes, so you get two momentum back. Dottig, as Fives in chat has suggested already, it occurs to you that all of the direct nouns, all of the, you know, people, place, things, they've been mixed up from square one. And now that you think about it, maybe they aren't weapons. Like, yeah, the weapons testing facility is what the Queen told you. But if the Universal Translator's been malfunctioning this entire time, maybe they're not weapons so much as the kitchen or a stove or some new way of processing meat kind of a thing. Oh. Pass that information along to Fives and Jaro as they try to compile or recompile rather the uh, translation matrix for the universal translator. To see if maybe we can get a more accurate translation of what they're trying to tell us. Mm -hmm. And this I am going to mandate as being an extended task because it is going to take time. So, uh, either Jaro or Fives, you can decide which one of you is taking the lead. But Fives, you're doing a probably a control and a uh, science. Uh, Jaro, you're doing a control engineering. And the difficulty on this, in fact, let me just copy paste this from my Word document. So, the work track is going to be a 14, the magnitude is going to be a 4. The difficulty will start at a 5, and there is one resistance on this. And what I would say is that for every attempt you make uh, at this extended task, 5 minutes will pass unless you spend 1 momentum to make it 2.5 minutes. Alright, Fives, what, 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 what do you think? What do you think? Well, I started to compile a cultural linguistic database while of the recordings we took on the ship. Uh, I have that data, and I would like to combine it with the um, what we just got from the lieutenant commander. And I believe that will fill the gaps in our translation matrix. Okay, and I'll uh, I'll see if I can fix the you know re re well. Let's just say I'm going to do some stuff with. You know, this and he points to the translator I getcha um, GM I mm -hmm. am going to use my sensor implant for this uh, control science success will give me an additional momentum for obtain information okay and then um, with untapped potential okay uh, I'm going to buy how much momentum do we really have uh, two at the moment Okay, and if I gave you, what, two threat, I could get two additional dice? Uh, well, it would be three momentum for two additional dice, so you would have to give me two momentum and one threat. Okay, and uh, I trust everyone's okay with me doing that? Of course. Okay, so two momentum and one threat, and um, come, let's see, control science... And I'm going to take uh, sociocultural psychology as my focus. Okay. And so I've got four dice. Mm hmm. And Jaro is assisting uh, with the one die of control take... science or control Double engineering. Click. And Jaro, I need to see a crit here, or the first five minutes you spend on this task go nowhere. It didn't take my uh, my focus. Uh, let me double check then. Double you unfortunately did not roll below a four, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Bar. All right, yeah. So what I'm going to say then, with only the four successes, uh, basically, Dottig, Alel, and Prin, you have five minutes to talk to the queen. Uh, just to suggest before we actually move into any RP on that, uh, do you want to spend your determination, try to re-roll that one zero, or... Um, I can do that. I also uh, get to roll a challenge dice for untapped potential. Um, I believe that's no, only because on you didn't success. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Then. Um. Uh, 
I probably can't charm the birds from the data tree on this. <laughs> probably not. Um, I, I think in this particular moment, I do not have an applicable value to tap for said determination. Fair enough. So yeah, sounds like uh, Alel, Prin, and Dat Datig have five minutes to kill. Somehow. Datig will just sort of look over at them and then he'll look at uh, Prin and Alel and say, uh, Your yeah. Majesty, would it be possible to see more of your beautiful palace and city? We're very curious about your architecture and to iconography, as Mr. Prim so adequately put it. I would be happy to show you around myself. Uh, however, uh, I, I mean no disrespect, you are rather large. You might have issues fitting in. Might you not have some gardens or some kind of uh, area outside of the palace that we could explore? I'm certain that uh, a tour of your city and its architecture, some of the history of the buildings therein, would be just as fascinating as the stories of your um, mytho-history that you've shared with us. And this entire time, like even from square one, you've never seen a frown or any sign of like negativity on the queen's face but here it doesn't go negative but it does creep towards neutral and she says the gardens yes uh i could show you them uh perhaps though i should give your officers some time it seems they are rather involved will they be coming with us and she motions at Jaro and Fives at this point. Oh, uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I I get hay fever. Um, <laughs> they are attempting to refine our ability to understand each other. Oh, I see. So they are working on a language then. Yes. What do you call these creatures that you're using these weapons on? What is the name? Your get your name for them. Well, uh... call them deer. Well, I, I understood that they were cattle, which is kind of a term used to denote a sort of food. Typically, an ungulate bovine. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, Your Majesty, what are what is the name of these of your of this food you're procuring? And she close. repeats the word deer, and again, translation error. Um, do you have any I could try? And she sort of raises a hand towards one of her guard, and one of the guard sort of scurries away into a back corridor and comes back actually rather quickly, like not even like 20 seconds pass before they, the guard comes back. And she brings you a platter, sort of holds it out to you, um, a silver platter, with uh, what appear to be chunks of actual deer meat, like venison, on a platter. Hmm. May I? Please. She looks back to Datig. Is this okay, culturally? By all means. Do you want some? Yes, please. Come on. And Come on. <laughs> She'll take one and, like, take a bite of it well I don't know what you were expecting but it wasn't venison you taste it's chicken because everything tastes like chicken mm. <laughs> uh, is it, it is this it she asked the queen <laughs> well yeah I'm unsure what you may have been expecting you know we I need to introduce you to something called seasoning. Oh, you mean like spices? Yes. We only reserve those for special occasions. Oh, I see. That's a shame. 
And uh, what I would say is that the queen actually gets up and slithers on over to the guard who's still holding the platter. And you see that uh, she picks up a few slices of the meat. And she doesn't bring it to her own mouth, but she brings it to her snake hair mouths and lets the snakes eat them. Alel is just doing that Denobulan smile, like, so big. Mm -hmm. She's just thrilled. And Alel, I'd actually like you to roll me a insight and con here. I know that's probably not a good stat for you, but okay. uh, I would like an insight con because this is you judging the mannerisms of the queen. Um, insight okay. con, and if you have anything like cultural studies, um, anything like uh, anthropology, that would apply as a focus. It's, it's people. Soil it great as people. Yeah, I was <laughs> actually going to say, could I... Before I ate it, scan yeah, it with I a scan or it. Even now that I've <laughs> oh, consumed it, could I scan what? it? Oh no! <laughs> <It's not like laughs> it. Yes. Oh, nice. yeah. oh no! So Alel, it's no, not soil and green, okay. but <laughs> what I'm gonna say here is that the complication is, if you understand correctly, you basically just ate pet food. As in that this food, this deer, is to feed the snakeheads, not the actual Ulki themselves. Oh, oh, oh my god, that's cute. Okay. She still eats away. She doesn't okay. care. She doesn't know anything about pet food. <laughs> really. Um, she just looks over at Dotik and, and Pranling. Hmm, good, right? Um, you know, maybe some... Uh... Maybe some paprika. It's um, somewhat reminiscent of Taspar. All the, the tentacles. Hmm. And it is at this point, now that you've bought five minutes of time, Jaro and Fives <laughs> may attempt another extended task. So uh, attempt. Jaro, looks, Jaro looks over at Fives and he's like, really, I, I think we need to realign the crystal. Um, so uh, here, let, let me try and we'll use your information but I just need to I just need to do some slight modifications. I I, th I think I've got this. Yeah, no, it's fine. I I think I might have cross-linked it wrong. Uh, oh, okay, good. Um uh, and he uh he looks down, and he kind of you know, he, um he kind of almost whispers under his breath like what would Jonah do? <laughs> <laughs> and he is going to spend his determination did you um, already spend it? Yes, I... yeah. but I'm but I'm at uh, I'm doing the increased difficulty. Okay. Because he's not in engineering. That is right. I did get yeah, did allow that. All right. So that means then that this is a difficulty of six is what that means. Okay. So not it's not the increased. Uh, at first, it was the increased uh, uh, complication range. Okay, then we can do that then. It will stay a difficulty of five, and okay. the complication range will then become a 17 to 20. Alrighty. Creeping down there. Uh-huh. <clears throat> All right, so he focuses in on it. We have absolutely no momentum. Uh, so I'll give you two threat for an extra die. Okay. And That's it. Dump control. Threat. Just like control science. Yep. Oh! That's well, there's <gasps> four successes with a complication. Can't. I mean, it, you could still pass here, but fives needs to roll at least one success. Do, do I get a? Do I get a focus on an assist? Oh, uh, you do. You do. Oh, okay. Let me make sure I don't double click here. Survey says nice. hey, that actually gets you a total of six successes, which means you get to a momentum right back. And yeah, uh, what's what that's going to mean is, Jaro, you can now roll six challenge die to represent your work done on fixing the translator, and then okay. we'll uh, we'll do with the complication. All right, so that is going to be six work done, which is a breakthrough. 
And this actually lines up great because I think I have the perfect complication and way to represent uh, your success is that when you adjust the crystalline matrix as you suggested, um, the words of the queen as she continues her dialogue with Dottig, Prin, and Alel, it changes in tone. Again, before the queen was not perhaps jovial, but very positive, very affirmative. But now, as you fix the translator a little bit, it's taking on a more neutral to not say hostile, but definitely more of a negative connotation. Where before, uh, for example, where she said, oh yes, please help yourselves. It's more now sort of a, oh, you're eating that kind of a thing. And as the conversation progresses and as time goes on, I'll try to flavor how this all affects the rest of the conversation. Um, but the complication is going to be that only Jaro and Fives are going to hear the correct quote-unquote words. <laughs> now, wow, that was, that was marvelous. I actually haven't seen... Uh... A crystal matrix realigned like that. Well done. Oh, well, uh, well, you know, a, fr a, f a friend, a, a friend of mine taught me, and you know, I, I, I was, yeah. Thank, thank you. Got it. Yeah. No, uh, Lieutenant Commander, we're good here. Really, it doesn't sound any different to me. Um, it it sounds very different to me. In, in what way? Um, it was, it was, it was bouncing first and now it's not so bouncing. I, I don't know what your definition of the word different is, Datek, but I mean, Lieutenant Commander, uh, but different, <laughs> still having a little like... bit of sass when it comes to Datek. <laughs> Fives is like looking around the room at all the guards in, in this new way. Mm -hmm. Just sort of keeping an eye out for any newly interpreted uh, mannerisms. Right. Well, because we are nearing session time, I think I have the perfect way to make this a two-parter. Is that the queen says, well, if you wish to visit the gardens, I can take you there immediately. That's what Prin, Alel, Dottig here, what Jaro and Fives here is, I can take you to the sacrificial pit. And that's where we'll call the session. And I can see Jaro and Fives both at the same time look over at Dottig. Sacrificial pit? <laughs> and that that is where we'll we'll call the session. And again, I should highlight just real quick so that's on stream. <laughs> There's still translation errors but you are sort of approaching the correct word. So there is the possibility that Sacrificial Pit is still not the correct translation, but it is a step in the right direction is what I'm going to give you as a hint wise. I mean, I think the intent is very clear regardless of perfect translation. And I believe the response to that would be a uh, Sacrificial what? <laughs> 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 But yeah, uh, that's going to be the end of the session. But uh, what did you guys think? Did you guys uh, enjoy the uh, extra chat complications? Did you hate it? Uh, what, what, what did you guys think? No, it's it was fun. Yeah. It, 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 lets, it lets them get involved, which is yeah. always kind of cool. Want them to participate. Participate. So, so, so we're actually going to do science on our science ship then, right? Yeah. Yes. That, that's, that's how I'm feeling. This is great. Going to get science-y. And yeah, it is one of those things where it I, I debated doing a voice changer for a while um, just to sort of like highlight the fact that the translation was different. Um, but in testing, it just it didn't turn out well. Like it was too modulated for my liking. But yeah. Interesting. Maybe I'll mess with it by next session. Or maybe I'll have some sort of solution that'll make it a little bit flowy, like it'll flow better. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, so let's see. So Twitch, uh, stick around. But YouTube, this is where we say goodbye. Uh, so YouTube, see you later. Bye-bye.